Hey guys, it's Abby, and today I'm going to do a get ready with me with you guys. I have a few errands to run, and I got the new um, Ooh La La palette from ColourPop, so I'm going to do this with you guys. Well, I'm going to try this with you guys as first impressions. I also got the Yes Please palette, but I've had the Yes Please palette. I just don't know where it went. Um, I lost it somehow, so I'll show it to you guys real quick. This is one of my favorite ColourPop palettes. It's just so pretty. It has all the colors that I absolutely love and they're really good. Like these are really great palettes. I'm not sure how ColourPop does it, but this was $16 and it's one of my favorite palettes. So I'm excited to have this one back, but I'm not gonna use this one today because I did get the Ooh La La palette and I'd like to try it out. It's a pink palette. I know I've been doing pink, pink looks lately, but it is going to be Breast Cancer Awareness Month coming up and actually tomorrow it starts and I think that I I thought that this would be a great palette just to you know kind of talk about breast cancer awareness month so I'm just taking off it has a nice big mirror right here and here is the palette isn't that pretty I love that shimmer right there I'm really excited to try that so um, I have no idea what I'm going to do, but I am going to go into the Yes Please palette and take out a base shade or transition shade, something or the other, mix these two together. I'll probably use this one just to start my eye look, but first I need to do my primer and my foundation because I always do that. This is one of those videos that I'm just like, just decided to sit down and do because my anxiety today has been so bad. It's just been like kind of uncontrollable. Like I've every technique that I have to bring my anxiety down is not working. Um, it is Halloween. It's October 31st and um, ha my anxiety has nothing to do with this holiday. It just doesn't. But it started last night. I'm using the Hangover Replenishing Face Primer. I got this in my Sephora, I think. And this is a moisturizing primer. I just bit my lip when I said that. It's a moisturizing primer and um, I find that this doesn't make me look shiny because I do have an oily T-zone and this hasn't done that to me. So I've been really liking this. I think I'm going to um, purchase a large size of this once the holidays are over and I have a little bit more money for myself. Um, so I think I'm going to do that. But anyway, I'm going to put this on. Um, my anxiety started last night. Um, it just became really, look at my hair. It just became really bad last night. And um, it's because of a number of things, but it was triggered. And I hate when something triggers me. Um, I'm the type of person that when I like feel something or like sadness or anger or anything, I kind of push it down and I don't let myself feel anything. And that is why I actually became an addict. Um, because I've realized that taking pills, I could numb myself. And um, so now that I'm not an addict, I'm almost 10 years clean. It's really hard for me to deal with my feelings. Like it's so hard for me to deal with my feelings. Like I hate it. I hate having to deal with them. I like, it's just something really hard for me to do. I don't know why. I wish I could just be like, all right, Abby, you're sad today. Just be sad. Or you're angry today. Just be angry. But I don't know how to do that. I don't know. I'm 10 years, almost 10 years clean. And I still can't figure out how to deal with my emotions. And I, it's so hard for me. Like I remember my sister Amanda was moving home. She was, my sister Amanda was like overseas. Her family's in the army and they were overseas for 12 years. And Amanda was like my everything. Well, she still is, but I told, I felt like I told her everything. So when she was moving home, I was like, thank God, I finally have my one person that I tell everything to. And I was so excited about that. And then when she moved home, I realized that I didn't tell her anything. Like I still was keeping so much inside. Like I was still not sharing anything. And I don't know why I do that. I don't, I don't know why I do that. I keep everything inside. So I think that's where my anxiety comes from because I don't know how to share my emotions or share how I'm feeling. Um, anyway, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going on, but I'm gonna show you what I'm using. So I'm gonna be mixing these two foundations together. I feel like these have been really helping with my T zone. I've been having trouble finding a foundation that is good for my oily T zone. If I use this one, which is the Matte Poreless 
um, Maybelline Fit Me in 128. These shades are a little dark for me right now. Um, or light. I don't remember which one. But anyway, um, I get shiny. And if I use this one, this is a Revlon Colorstay Full Cover Foundation. And this is 24 hours and it's a matte foundation as well. Um, I find that I get shiny with this one too. But if I mix the two of them together, I end up having nice full cover having nice full coverage but it looks really um it looks good and it stays matte for me most of the day so i'm just going to mix these two together um anyway so when i have anxiety like this i will like pace my house or i'll try and figure something out to do like this morning i was going through like my makeup um all of my stuff where i store my makeup i was going through it like cleaning it out and just Oh, I get just so frustrated with myself because I wish that I was normal. Like I wish that I could be a normal person and deal with my anxiety or fix the problem that I'm having, but I can't fix it. Like it just doesn't want to be fixed on me and it's so frustrating. I just, I'm so frustrated with it. Uh, I'm just looking for a brush to mix my foundation together. I don't use foundation brushes for my foundation. I've always used a sponge because I find foundation brushes make my foundation look streaky, but I do um, mix it together and then put it on my face and then use a um, beauty blender to buff it out. So last night, I'll tell you how I my anxiety got triggered. I do not do this. This is just something I don't do. I never ever do this. And I don't know why I chose to sit down and do this video. I don't know why I decided to do it. I just need a second to bring myself back down to normal. So I'm gonna paint my face with foundation. Something can trigger you like this. And you could be fine. Like you could be absolutely fine. And let me, like when my kids are home and they're like, they're home, I don't ever do this. Like I don't ever let my emotions get me like this because like the other day, my daughter Dolly, we we're talking, I was telling her, Dolly is very much like my husband and she doesn't really talk. Like if something's bothering her, she won't share it with me. And I always say she's like my husband, but maybe she's like me. I, I don't know. Cause I wasn't like this when I was younger. But I was telling her, I'm like, Dahlia, it's okay if, if you're feeling sad, if you're feeling angry, if you're upset. Like, it is okay. You can tell me because I can't read your mind. I don't know what's going on with you. Whereas Scarlett, on the other hand, my youngest, I can read her like a book. If something's bothering her, I can read her like a book. But with Dahlia, I can't. I've never been able to. Like, she, I just can't read her at all. And I can't read my husband sometimes either. And it's very frustrating actually, um, because I wanna be able to help my kids no matter what, like no matter what's bothering them, I wanna be able to be like, I know what's wrong, but I can't with Dahlia. So I was telling her, like I did my eyebrows before I did my foundation, which I don't normally do, but I knew I was making a video, so I did my brows. So I was telling Dahlia, like, Dahlia, you've got to tell me when something's bothering you. Like, I need to know because if you don't tell me, I can't help you. And my job as your mom is to help you. I, I'm supposed to help you. That's, I'm your mommy. Like, I'm supposed to help you. And um, I was like, if you want to cry, cry. I'll, I'll be here to hold your hand and hug you and love on you and, you know, like, I'll, I'll help you get over whatever you need. It's okay to be sad. It's normal to be sad. Even if you don't know what you're sad for, it's normal. I'm like, so if you want to cry, cry. If you want to laugh, laugh. If you just want to hug, hug me. Like, I'm your mom. I, it doesn't matter what you do. You can be the goofiest person in the world, but I will still love you and I will still help you and I will still take care of you. And she looks at me and she goes, well, I haven't seen you cry she goes, I've never seen you cry. And I was like, well, yeah, you have. When my best friend Marissa died, you saw me cry. And she was like, mommy, that was years ago. That was so long ago. She's like, so you don't cry. And 
I always feel like if I cry, I'm going to scare my kids and I don't want to scare them because I'm their mom. And when you see your parent cry, you scare them because they don't, they don't want to see you at your weakest, you know, like, and I know my sister Amanda tells me all the time, like, I cry all the time. Like, it's okay to cry, but I have this thing with me that I feel like if they know that I'm upset or I'm sad, I'm going to hurt them and they're going to worry. And I don't want to worry my kids. So I don't, I don't know why I'm talking about that, but like, that's how I feel. So I do, I hide my emotions. But we're going to get on to why my anxiety is this bad. And I promise you I'm going to get through it without boohooing with you guys. So, because um, out of my all of my YouTube videos, I don't think I've ever made a video where I was sad. I've talked about my anxiety, but I've never... Um, I've never cried on a video and not that I find there's anything wrong with crying on a video. I don't find anything wrong with that. Like when there's something that's bothering you, like share it, you know? So anyway, <clears throat> last night I tucked my kids in and I was like, tomorrow's going to be Halloween. Yay. I'm so excited. And, um, I gave them kisses and I snuggled them into bed and I turned on their music. I always, I always put on, I have a mirror behind me, so if I'm looking behind me, that's that's why. Um, so I tucked them in, I put on their music. I always put on classical music for them because I don't know why, I always felt like it would help them. Dahlia turns her off, hers off, Scarlett leaves hers on. But something I've always done. And I um, went into my bedroom and my husband was watching. Um, my husband was watching a game or he was watching a show or something out in the living room. And I told him, I was like, Matt, I'm feeling really tired. I'm not really feeling well. I could feel my anxiety was getting bad, but it wasn't like an, the anxiety that I couldn't handle. You know, like it was just an everyday anxiety, I guess. I'm like, I'm feeling really tired. I'm just going to go lay down. Um, but can you stay in the living room? Because my kids' room is, is on the other side of the house, which we don't have a huge house, but it's on the other side. I'm using this Revlon Youth FX Fill and Blur Concealer. I love this concealer. I'm just running low. That's why I use another one. But this is great for anyone that's like my age um, or older. It doesn't it doesn't like define the um, little wrinkles you have underneath your eyes. Like it doesn't make you crease up. So I like to put this on just to, you know, give me some extra coverage. Um so I told him, I was like, do you think that you could stay out in the living room? Um, because I, um, I just want to lay down. I just want to go to bed and I don't want the kids to come in and like bother me tonight. Like usually every night, like the kids get out of bed and they, they do something, you know, like kids get out of bed and they bother you or whatever. But I just wanted to have some peace and quiet. I felt like my, my, I felt like my head was jumbled. Like there was just so much noise in my mind. So I go in my room. He was like, sure, I'll just, you know, stay out here and close the door. So if the kids come out, they won't come in the room, in your room, in our room. So I go in my room and I um, I go onto YouTube. I see that Sharon, Sharon Wise is live and I stop in on her live and I say hello. And um, I was only on there for a few minutes and then I get off and I go and I turn on the TV and I go on to HBO or one of the movie channels and I see the movie Titanic. This is gonna be so silly. This is so silly, guys. I This is so silly, but I don't normally share stuff like this. So I wanna kinda of show you guys how I am. Okay, this is the ColourPop No Filter Sheer Press Foundation or powder, whatever it is. And I'm gonna use this to set my makeup. So I turn it on and I start watching it and Titanic is a sad movie but it was like kind of in the middle of it where it's not sad yet they were just doing the love story and I start watching it and it automatically made me think of my sister Heidi who passed away and um, if you're a new watcher of mine I don't know if you know but I have I have a sister who passed away um, Years ago, years, years ago, 2001. And I still feel like it's brand new. Do you ever feel that way? Like, I think because I numbed myself so much after her death, I never dealt with it. Um, so I started thinking of my sister Heidi because the last movie that we saw together was Titanic. We, My sister Amanda, my sister Jackie, my twin sister Jackie, 
and my sister Heidi. Heidi lived in Arizona, but she came home for vacation, and we all went to go see Titanic. And I remember when we were watching the movie, I was sobbing. I sobbed at that movie. I was so sad about that movie that on the way home, I was crying in the car. And I remember Heidi turning around and looking back at me and being like, oh, Ab, don't be so sad. It's just a movie. And like, I laughed it off and that was it. That was my memory. But because I was thinking about Heidi, I started thinking about this other thing that happened. And I was watching this show on Netflix weeks ago. And <clears throat> I'm going to get through it. Seven seconds. Okay. So I, I watched this show seven seconds on Netflix. It's um, like a, a Netflix original. And in that movie, this woman's son had a hit and run. And I remember her in the movie. She was talking about how her son was laying in the, in the cold snow by himself. And he was probably thinking about his mom. He was probably Jesus, Abby, get through this. Like, why can't you just get through a freaking sentence? So she was talking about how her son was probably laying there calling for his mom and his body was broken and he was calling for his mom. She was like, and I just can't get past that. And when I was listening to her do that, I had this sudden rush of like, do you ever have like all of a sudden every nerve ending on your skin kind of gets sensitive and it's like a realization of something you're like, oh, you know, so I had that when she was talking about, when she was talking about her son laying on the road, I'm going to start doing my eyes. I'm going to get this color from my palette and put on my eyes. So she was talking about her son laying there and I had that like, like, uh, like, not, like a, oh my gosh moment. And I started thinking about my mom and I started thinking about my sister Heidi because my sister Heidi, how she died was, it was a single car accident. And all this, she was on the highway and then all of a sudden her car just veered off the road and flipped over. And she wasn't wearing her seatbelt, so she was ejected. And um, one of the drivers that saw her on the road, my hands are shaking. One of the drivers that saw her on the road um, was, a, was like an ER doctor or something like that. So he got off, he stopped his car and went out there and sat with her and stayed with her until the ambulances came. And I never thought about what actually happened to my sister. Like, does that sound weird? Like, I never thought what she about what she went through. I kind of just thought like she died and my pain and my sadness about how she died, like. <sighs> I never thought about like what she actually went through. I kind of like, after someone dies, you think about how much you miss them and how much your life has changed and all that kind of stuff. But for me, I never let myself think about what she went through. So that, that show, all of a sudden, like I had to stop the show and I said to my husband, I was like, I've never thought about this. Like, I've never thought about what Heidi went through, about the pain she must have been in. Was she thinking about my mom? Was she wishing someone was there? Like, did some, all of these thoughts are going through my head. So last night, and that was weeks ago, so last night when I was watching Titanic, I started thinking about it again. I started thinking about my sister Heidi and like what she went through and like our last memories together. And if you haven't lost a loved one, like you kind of don't know how it feels. Like if you haven't lost someone like a sister or anybody really that you're super close to, if you haven't lost a person like that, I mean, thankfully you haven't. Um, but that feeling of sadness and loss never goes away. But when you're someone like me who either has masked their emotions um, just like dulled them down and never dealt with them. You, when you start feeling the emotions, it's kind of like overpowering and it doesn't, it doesn't go away. Like it doesn't go away. And that's what triggered my anxiety. So my anxiety has been super bad ever since then. 
And it's so horrible because I can't fix it. I can't make it go away. Like I feel this incredible sadness. I just feel an incredible sadness today that doesn't want to go away and I can't make it go away. Okay, so I'm gonna go in with soft core right here and we're gonna just start building up my crease. So anyway, that's why I decided to get on to my video because when I first started my channel, I would do get ready, not really when I first started, but last year when my kids were in school and, I've had, and I had really bad anxiety, I would get on and I would do a get ready with me and I would talk to you guys and it would kind of help me bring my anxiety down. But I don't feel it yet. <laughs> I have like this and like whenever I think another part of my anxiety is like when I think about my sister's loss or not my loss of the loss of my sister. I think about all the other ones that I've been through. And um, I just I get I just can't stop thinking about them. And that's how I feel right now. Like I feel like I ha I feel like this incredible feeling of loss like and I can't numb it. I can't make it go away. And if I could, I would, I would make it go away. I would be, I would make it go away, but I can't. And, um, that's just really hard. It's so hard because, but that's what I did. Like last night I laid in bed thinking about my sister and thinking about how my mom felt and thinking about how my sisters felt. Um, so I thought maybe if I talked about, my sister, like what happened with my sister and how the death happened, maybe it would make me feel a little bit better. So I'm going to talk to you guys about it. When I was in 2001, so I was 19, I'm probably 19, 20 years old. I just started dating my husband and moved into an apartment. We weren't married, but he was my boyfriend and we had moved into an apartment together and I was teaching at a school. This is actually really pretty pink. I was teaching at a school. I had um, three and four year olds in my class. Um, and I taught there for six years. So um, I woke one morning, I was getting ready for work. And my sister Jackie calls my phone. And now my sister Heidi lived in Arizona, like I said before. She was going to college there. And she was engaged to a guy named Paul. And um, Heidi had so much stuff going for her. Like she had so many things going for her and it was like an amazing, she was just amazing. Heidi was amazing. She was the only blonde haired, blue eyed kid in our family. Beautiful girl, tiny, petite, just, just amazing. And um, so we were, we were all close. Like, you know when someone moves far away, you're not like super close, but you, She's your sister, so you're close because she's your sister. Um, so I woke up one morning. I was getting ready for school, to go to school, to go to work. And my phone rings. And it's my twin sister, Jackie. And I could tell there was something off with her, the way she was talking to me. But you don't go to something horrible. You just don't. You don't, like, go to something horrible. So she goes, Abby, are you sitting down? I'm like, no, I'm not sitting down. She's like, sit down. And I was like, okay, Jackie, I'll sit down. So I pretended to sit. <laughs> Why? I don't know. But I was like, okay, I'm sitting. I was pretending. And um, so I'm just going to kind of tone this down a little bit because I feel like it's way too pink. Um, so she says, are you sitting down? I'm like, yeah, Jackie, I'm sitting. Oh, that doesn't look right. Hmm. Kind of made it look like purple or something. Well, I'll have to do it on this side too. Anyway, so I was like, yeah, Jackie, I'm sitting down. So um, she goes, all right, well, Abby, Heidi died. Oh my God, that looks terrible. I need to take this I'm gonna off. take this off because I really don't like the way that's looking and I'm not in like a very pink mood to tell you the truth so I'm gonna take this off and I'm going to use the zipper palette or not this why do, I don't know why I called it 
ever since I've gotten this palette, I've called it the zipper palette. I don't know why, but I always have called it the zipper palette. Like it has nothing to do with the zipper, nothing. There's no zipper on it at all, but I call it the zipper palette, but it's the yes please palette. So let's just get that right because it is not a zipper palette at all. I don't know why that made my eyes turn purple. Probably because I've been crying all morning. God, I'm a mess. So she tells me to sit down and I pretend I'm sitting down. She, she says, Abby, Heidi's dead. And I was like, Jackie, that's not funny. Like you don't say something, don't call me up and tell me that someone's dead. Like that's not funny. Cause when you think about it, who would ever think that that's gonna happen? Tell me, you never think, you never think like not you, this doesn't happen to you. Like this doesn't happen, not in real life. This does not happen. I was like, Jackie, that's not funny. She's like, no, Abby, I'm serious. Heidi died. Like she, she was killed in a car accident last night. And I'm, I was in shock. Like I didn't, I was in shock, like literal, literal shock. And then I hear a beeping outside and it's my brother-in-law, John, because Gretchen and John were at my mom's house. And um, I guess they said to Jackie, call Abby, tell her what's going on and we're gonna go pick her up. We don't want her to be alone. So I'm in like a fog, like I had no idea. Like when this happens, you kind of go into like, my first reaction was kind of just to go into like a fog. I didn't cry, it kind of was just like in a fog. So I get into my brother, my brother-in-law's car and we go to my mom's house and we get there and Gretchen's there. My oldest sister Gretchen's there. And we're kind of just like staring at each other in disbelief that this is even happening. And she goes, Abby, we have to go get phones. And I'm like, phone? She's like, yeah, house phones, because we only have one house phone. So weird, right? Um, we only have one house phone and we need to go get phones. So I was like, okay. So we get in the car and we're going out to like Acme, like, sh like supermarkets, and we're looking for phones and we're kind of like quiet. We're not saying anything. And then my mom had gotten the call early in the morning, like super early in the morning that Heidi passed away. No, my mom got the call that Heidi was in a car accident and the hospital said, you need to come right now. You need to come right now, get on a plane and come. And right after that phone call, my sister died. So it was like, she kind of was like holding on for my mom. Oh my God, I cannot imagine my mom going through that. Whew. So I've never told, I've never talked about this. I've never talked about this guys. All right, so now we're going to go back into the Yes Please palette and start. So anyway, my mom gets the call, so she goes and gets on a, to, she books a flight and she heads out to the airport. And right when she heads out to the airport, she's walking to the airport and she sees all these birds take off. All of these birds take off and she told me, she was like, at that moment, I knew Heidi had died. She's like, I knew Heidi died. So my aunt, who lived in California at the time, or still does, she was closer to Arizona and she um, flew home with my sister. Like they, I don't know how they do it, but she, I guess the plane that they were flying Heidi home on, um, like the casket, she flew home with her. So my mom came home and she was back at the house with us. And that night, like all of our relatives started coming in and my twin sister was living in um, Chicago for school at the time. So she wasn't there, but she was taking a flight in. So I was at the house with my older sister and some of my other relatives. And that night, like it felt like the whole day was in a fog, you know, like a whole, a fog it was just a fog. And, um, that night, like more relatives came, my brother showed up, his wife. Um, and then I go and I go to sleep in my mom's room and I made a bed on the floor and I went to sleep in my mom's room. And at like two o'clock in the morning, my twin sister comes home and she climbs into my bed. And I remember this so vividly. Like I remember doing this so vividly. She climbs into my bed and she snuggles up with me and like lays next to me. And I go, Jackie, why are you here? Did someone die? And like, it came out of my mouth, like, did someone die? I don't know why I said it. I don't know what happened, why my mind wasn't thinking right, but 
that's how it went. Like, I was like, did someone die? And then her and I, like, just laid in bed crying. And then we fell asleep. And the days after, because my family, we were brought up, we were brought up Jewish. So to be, to, to have a Jewish funeral, there's so much you have to have. You have to have, like, someone sit with the body for three days. And then, um, so, like, you can go visit. It's not like a viewing, but you can go sit in there with her and... Um, it took, it seemed like it took forever to actually have the funeral. Um, but it was like no sense. I never felt that sense of closure. Like I just never felt sense of closure cause I never got to say goodbye. So after like the funeral was done, my sister Amanda came home from Hawaii and like, well, for the funeral, all my family came in, Amanda moved home from Hawaii. I mean, she came home from Hawaii and then after everything was done, the funeral was over, Amanda went back to Hawaii and she found out she was pregnant with my nephew, Caden. And they, throughout the pregnancy, they knew there was something wrong, um, but they just didn't know like exactly how, what was gonna happen when she gave birth to him. Um, he had a heart defect. So almost exactly a year after Heidi died, Amanda gave birth to her son and he ended up dying three days later. Now, three days later after he, after he was born, he passed away three days after that. But right after my sister Heidi died, 9-11 happened. 9-11 happened and um, so while the world was, while the world was going through this 9-11 thing, I was going through the death of my sister and I just remember feeling like so many people were going through so much pain at the time. I remember th thinking that way, like all of these people are feeling my pain. Like they all are going through something. It was, and like, I was sad about 9-11. It was just a really hard time in my life at that point. And then a year later, my sister, my sister, Amanda had her baby, her baby passed away. That was so hard because you like you go through something and you want to be able to take your the pain away from your sister but you can't because nobody I don't know what it feels like to lose a child and I couldn't help her like I couldn't personally just help her I I didn't know how so I dealt with that and then um My eye makeup is just not turning out right. I'm just going to just keep going because if I don't, I'm just going to end up taking it off again. And this is going to be a shitty get ready with me. Anyway, so I never dealt with any of that. Like I just kind of like glided through life and just felt like I was never dealing with anything. Like I honestly felt like I never dealt with anything at all. And that's when I started taking pills. I started taking pills around that time. I was prescribed pain medicine for um, ovarian cysts and um, I started like realizing that they kind of numbed me from feeling pain or like feeling emotion and that's when I started taking them and anytime something would happen I would just take more pills over and over and over again so I've, I haven't dealt with any emotion and I feel like maybe that's the reason why my this video is all over the place and I apologize I really apologize because I'm not really myself right now I can feel it like I'm not myself right now I can feel myself being a little bit off and um, I'm sorry about that guys um, so because like I, I I medicated myself I was like medicating myself so I didn't feel pain and then um I did that for years like years and years and years I just medicated myself <clears throat> to not feel pain <clears throat> to not feel pain and then finally I got myself sober but if you've ever been um an addict you know that it takes a really long time for your body kind of to like even itself out 
and I feel like that is exactly what is happening with me like my body's still evening out and then um, my emotions like I still don't know how to deal with my emotions I do go to therapy and um, I do like talk to someone about it but I just felt like the other night last night I was feeling so much I was thinking about my sister and what she went through and like I couldn't stop myself from thinking like that and then a lot of the holidays that I celebrate like with my kids I used to celebrate with my best friend Marissa and me and Marissa were best friends in high school and um, after high school we were really good friends we did everything together everything together and um, she died a few a few years ago and like the lo that loss was when I was sober and it was one of the hardest losses I ever dealt with because I was sober I didn't know how to deal with it and I became angry and I never truly forgave her like I say I miss her and I love her but I never really forgave her for that and um, I think of that often like very very often So anyway, my anxiety started because of Titanic. Thank you, Titanic. You really gave me a good night. But I tend to hide how I'm feeling with my husband. Like, my husband knows how to deal with me really well. He's not, he doesn't, it's not like if I'm having, and I don't get anxiety attacks. Like I don't all of a sudden like, <gasps> like I don't do that. It's just like this feeling, this overwhelming feeling of something terrible is going to happen. That's what it is. I have a fear of something terrible that's going to happen. And I can't control it. So I end up having, I end up feeling like this. And I hate the way I feel. I hate the way I feel right now. And that's why I got on camera because I thought, and I probably won't post this. If I post this, guys, if I post this video, then you know that I really must be going through something because normally I wouldn't post something like this. I feel like this overwhelming sadness. Like, I can't stop thinking about my sister and what she went through. I can't stop thinking about so many things. I can't stop thinking about my own children. Um, like, you know, like I can't stop thinking about my mom and how, what she went through and I just wish that I could brush this all away and hide it and put it in like a little drawer and only take it out every once in a while to look at it and then put it back. That's how I feel. I'm gonna put my eyeliner and my mascara on and I'll be right back. Does anyone else have a problem with the IT Cosmetics mascara? It just drips. It dripped on my face. I got this one for my BoxyCharm. It literally dripped on my face and I don't wanna like take it off before it dries, but it's a big, big spot. It's still there. Um, my anxiety is more like, I feel like something terrible is gonna happen. So I have this fear right now of something terrible is going to happen. And I keep having like flashbacks because of my, it was my sister, like that movie that triggered me with my sister. Because of that, I'm having like flashbacks to her funeral and my sister Amanda. And like, I'm just having like flashbacks and these terrible feelings going through my head. And I feel like something bad's going to happen because of it. And I don't know. I know that doesn't sound normal. I know like, it's like, Abby, it was so long ago, Why? but I don't know. I don't know why it goes through my head like that. And now I feel like something terrible is going to happen and I, I can't control it. That's how my mind works and it's a terrible feeling. All right, I'm just going to put some color in the inner corner of my eyes. I'm going to use this. I'm going to use this one right here from the Ooh La La palette. But it has been a really long time since I... 
um, really thought about losing my sister. Not that I have, it's been a long time since thinking about my sister, but about the loss and my feelings for it. And I'm not really sure what's normal and what's not. I don't know what's normal. I'm like grief, I don't know what's normal for that. So I don't know. I don't know if what I'm going through is normal or not. All right, so I'm going to just bronze up my face a whole bunch because, and I'm using the NYX palette and I just sweep it in there. I am very, very, very grateful that I have a platform where I can talk to you guys. I'm very thankful that I have a platform where I can talk to you guys and like, even if I don't post this, I know I could if I wanted to. And just making the video, like sitting down and doing my makeup and talking to you guys, even though it was like literally about nothing and it was just me jabbering on, it made me feel a little bit better. So I'm really thankful for that. And um, thank you so much for just listening and being a part of my life. Like I, I feel very, very, very lucky that I have a platform to talk to people and maybe there's someone else that goes through what I go through like this feeling of being scared all the time like you you get scared of losing someone or something bad happening like I'm literally waiting for the next ball to drop right now that's how I feel like something terrible is gonna happen and I just I'm waiting for the phone call and that does happen often for me. I wish I could be the person that was like, oh, nothing like that's gonna happen. Like, Abby, knock it off. But I honestly feel like that. I feel like something's going to happen. And I wish I could control that feeling. I wish I could, that feeling would go away. But I don't know how to make it go away. So let's try and talk about something else other than my craziness. What are you guys doing for Halloween? If you have kids, are you guys going trick-or-treating? My one daughter, Dahlia, she likes the whole getting candy, but she hates walking. <laughs> like Scarlett could walk for hours. Or Dahlia, she's like, no, I don't want to. So most, most um, Halloweens, Dahlia will go home early and I'll continue to walk with Scarlett. It happens every Halloween. Every freaking Halloween, same thing happens. So that's what's going to happen. But what are you guys going to do? Are you guys going trick-or-treating? Do you guys have trick-or-treating on Halloween? Some, some towns do. Like I know where my sister lives. They go trick-or-treating. Like um, The town she's in went trick-or-treating the other night and the next town over is going tonight. Like They separate it. They do it on different nights. Does that happen where you live? That doesn't happen for us. Trick or treating is on the same night as Halloween. I wish it wasn't a school night though. Because I'm the type of person that stresses about that. Like, oh my God, they need to go to bed so they're not tired for school. Even though it's one freaking night a year, I can't, I can't handle it. I, I wish I was like, okay with that. The Wet n Wild Mega Glow Highlighters are so good. Like they're just so good and so pretty. I think they're so pretty. I'm gonna fix my eyebrows. Sometimes like, I know like when I feel this way I have friends or like my family, they'll be like, well, why didn't you call me, Abby? If you're feeling this way, why didn't you say something? But I always feel like my problems aren't, aren't bigger than anyone else's problems. And I don't want to, like, everybody has a life. Everybody's stressed out about something. I don't want to stress anybody else out for my own issues. I've always felt that way. 
And I kind of, that's why I don't open up because I feel like my problems are nothing compared to somebody else's. It's the, hold on. It's the NYX color in lip, the NYX soft matte lip cream in the color Dublin. It's so pretty and it goes great with like any lip gloss. And I'm just gonna use my Marc Jacobs lip gloss in Allow Me. Like if I was gonna go out and do something like just run errands, this is exactly what I would do for my face. All right, guys, that is it for today. Thank you guys so much for listening to me. I don't know if I'm gonna post this. I say this a lot. I don't know if I'm gonna post this. Um, I feel really overwhelmed and really sad and really full of anxiety today. And I don't know how to deal with it. It's so hard for me because like I said, I, I hold everything in. It doesn't matter what it is, I hold it in. And sometimes it just kind of like comes out and this is how I get. And I feel like I'm just like this one big ball of emotion that I'm kind of like chaotic in my brain. Like it's just chaos. Like I'm thinking about this and I'm thinking about that and then I'm thinking about this and I feel chaotic and I, and it will go away. It's going to go away. But until it does, that's how I'm gonna feel. But thank you so much for listening to me. I'm so sorry if this is a Debbie Downer. I'm so sorry. I love you guys so, so much. Thank you for watching this video and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.